Water Rotor Energy Technologies. Low cost power from slow moving water. The demand for energy has never been greater. All over the world, people struggle to survive without electricity. Over a billion people across the globe have no access to electricity or clean water. Over 22 million in Latin America, 400 million people in Africa, and 500 million in Asia. These communities live in geographical areas that are difficult to put on the grid. Places like islands off the Philippines or in the Himalayan mountains are difficult for grids to be able to be put up. So without access to electricity, they won't get access to lighting, to heating, to cooling, to refrigeration, to hospitalization. Inventor Fred Ferguson has come up with a plan to change their lives. I wanted to help the 1.2 billion people on this planet today that have no power to finally have electricity. Ferguson has an international reputation for innovation. He's won awards from the Canadian government for advances in aerospace and is a recipient of the Phillips Petroleum Award for problem solving. In 1985, Ferguson created the pioneering magnospherical airship that takes advantage of the Magnus effect, which reduces drag and creates lift. It's the same principle that causes baseballs to curve when thrown by a pitcher, or golf balls to lift and soar. A founder of Magen Power, Ferguson pioneered high altitude wind energy with a helium filled air rotor that converts wind power to electrical energy. Now he has turned his design skills to release the power from an abundant source of energy, water. When you look at water, which is 830 times more powerful than air at the same speed, you only need a few miles an hour to realize that you've got a tremendous amount of energy that's, that's within that flow. And of course, 70% of the planet is moving water. Hydroelectric power supplies 16% of the world's energy. But dams require large-scale investment and need to be connected to the grid to distribute power. Ferguson's solution is to tap the energy from slow-moving water. By far, the largest amount of water that moves around the world is slow-moving. Most water on this planet is running below six miles per hour. This is a source of energy that's plentiful and accessible. But up until now, the technology hasn't existed to take advantage of it. Slow moving water's potential has been difficult to capture because the momentum behind the water that's flowing down the river has been difficult to turn a turbine. No slow water hydropower solution has ever been successful. Traditional designs like the turbine, Savonius, Darius, and other bladed technologies all need flow speeds in excess of 6.5 miles per hour to generate meaningful amounts of electricity. Yet there's a $100 billion market not being addressed until now. Fred Ferguson has designed a turbine that produces low-cost energy from slow-moving water, the water rotor. The secret lies in the unique shape of the rotating blade. So we have a combined shape of a cup, anemometer-type cup-like shape, but we also have a back that's very critical in terms of its shape because it acts like a wing as that blade comes into position. The hydrodynamic blades produce high drag and high lift at the same time. First, the front of the blade is scoop-shaped to produce high drag. But the back of Ferguson's blade is shaped like an aeroplane wing to produce high lift, pulling the blade round in the water flow. Ferguson's unique design enables it to draw power from slow-moving water. There's nothing else in the speed range in water that's generating electricity. No other water turbine 
has managed to produce copious amounts of energy from slow running water. It is a game changer. But when Ferguson lodged his design at the patent office in Washington, the head examiner corrected Ferguson's application. What was being applied for here was something new. It represented a new era in turbines. It wasn't right to call it an advancement to a Savonia-style turbine. It needed its own name. The advancement and the innovation was so significant that it wasn't right to call it anything that already existed. In my experience, I have never been a part of any interview that had such a positive comment come from the USPTO authorities. A new era in renewable energy has led to calls for a new name. Others have said, oh yeah, so we're gonna call it the Ferguson Rotor, Ferguson Blade, or what have you. It's more important that this is a technology and a potential um, advantage to what's going to happen in the future relative to this planet. Ferguson's innovative design promised to generate significant quantities of power from slow-moving water. An elegant one kilowatt turbine is produced and is delivered to the banks of the Gallup Canal in Ontario, where it makes its debut. There it goes. Turn it. Next came the rigorous testing. We've tested in a number of rivers, that being the St. Lawrence River, in a two mile an hour flow some local Canadian rivers and flows as high as five miles per hour. The water rotor underwent seven years of intensive testing in Canada's rivers. This has been a, a better than what could be imagined successful first test. Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy. The results of the first tests were surprising. The water rotor generated more power than anticipated. Next, a much larger water rotor was tested in the world's largest flume tank, based in St. John's, Newfoundland. A five kilowatt prototype was put through its paces. The results revealed that the turbine converted more than half of all the available energy in slow moving water to electricity. This is a technology that's just waiting to be exploited. The flume also shows that the water rotor is environmentally friendly, allowing fish and marine life to flow past it unharmed. The water rotor is being produced in a range of sizes. The largest of our water rotors at the moment produce about 20 kilowatts and are about the size of a big SUV, meaning they're mobile. The small water rotors we have, which I call consumer units, they could go in the back of an SUV. Principally, they can be used any place where there is no available power, where there is water power. Water rotor can support other green technologies where they need supplementing, like solar power. Solar's efficiency is still in the 19 to 21% sort of level, so it's not converting all of the electricity. And solar power only works in daytime when there's least demand for power. In rural communities, often the necessity for electricity will be at night. So that can make it difficult for people to be able to have the electricity when they most need it. Wind turbines are also inefficient and expensive to build and maintain. Unlike solar and wind energy systems, water rotor supplies an uninterrupted source of energy, providing very low cost electricity. This is running all the time, it's generating power. And unlike solar, it's doing it 24 hours a day. Traditional sources of power like diesel are polluting and comparatively expensive. Using a one kilowatt unit replaces 125 barrels of diesel oil. Water rotor is highly competitive, producing electricity at one sixth of the price of diesel. Water rotor is the perfect answer to reducing pollution and the carbon footprint. Water rotor's green credentials are attracting major business interests. The Canal and River Trust in England 
Heathrow Airport, and the Canadian Navy are in discussions with Water Rotor to add renewable energy for their operations. Disaster has a devastating effect on lives and cuts essential power. Supporting the disaster relief effort, Water Rotor could be quickly deployed, supplying low-cost electricity to homes and hospitals. The Water Rotor makes Ferguson's dream a reality, bringing essential energy to those living off-grid for the first time. Water Rotor has been granted patents in 72 countries across Europe, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Scandinavia and the Americas. This technology as a small portable unit can really change the core to an impoverished or to a community that requires electricity. Water Rotor has other life-changing applications too. Right now, 833 million people do not have access to clean water. 4,500 children will die today from water-related diseases. The electricity generated by Water Rotor has the potential to provide a constant supply of clean, fresh drinking water. Water purification is a big problem on this planet. So what's an easier way to purify water than to use electricity? It's a development that will have a profound effect on the health of millions of people. Drawing on a previously untapped source of renewable energy, Water Rotor is ready to distribute vital, low-cost electricity. Water Rotor Energy Technologies. Low-cost power from slow-moving water.